Hello again, group leaders. Welcome uh, to another round of our group leader training videos. This session is all about invitation culture, evangelism, looking outside. How do we maintain a missional group? And I'm going to start very practically, really functionally right away and say that there are basically two fundamental types of missional groups. There's a type of group that, and this is embodied kind of by the one I find myself gravitating to in the last two, three years. And this is what I'm going to call the type of group that is basically a closed, deep growth with a few type of group. And this is a group where, the, the, in, my, in my case, these men, they sign on for a 12-month experience where they have various commitments, which is a whole other video and a whole other handout, that they have agreed to for this 12-month <clears throat> journey. We're going to, like I did three years ago, a book club. Everyone agreed to read one book a month, and then we'd come back and discuss how it's changing us, transforming us. In this type of model, how do we maintain a missional focus, looking outside ourselves, being open to guests and visitors? Well, basically what we did is we went with the member-guest approach. So this is for you, and this is what you need to ask yourself right away, group leader. What type of group are you? If you are a closed group, are you still open to the visitor, to the, to the guest in your midst? Someone who wants to find out, really, what is this Bible study, and what do you do in a small group at a church? You must still maintain a missional focus by being open to those who might come and check it out. Right. And can your group be safe? For someone just to see one time and maybe that guest who knows maybe they become a member of your closed group because they decide they're going to agree to and commit to the same covenant promises the rest of the group members have already that's option one quickly now option number two what i'm going to call the rolling entry type of group now bucky could weigh in on this and you may find this in the notes later but that's the type of group that he's led for years and years a bible study where they truly just go through the books of the bible maybe the whole bible over several years now this group it's a men's study it meets in the morning. People are free to come and go as many mornings as they can, as they're willing to. It's always open to outsiders. It's always open to guests and visitors, someone who has no idea what a Bible study is. They have, get this is a key term, they have no barrier to entry. They, it is safe for them to come and check this Bible study out. The common denominator is what I want to say before I hand it back over to Bucky. All groups must maintain a commitment to being missional, to being outsider focused. Uh, to, to being kingdom focused, that people grow in the relationship with Jesus, that they invite other people to have a new relationship with Jesus or a more transforming relationship with Jesus. All groups should maintain that commitment. The how is up to you, but all groups should maintain that commitment, right, Bucky? Yeah, yeah, it's the great commission. We're all together on mission because we've been commissioned to go and make disciples together. And so every group has that call uniquely if they're formed in a different way, but they want to say, focused outward and saying, how can we make a kingdom impact in our circles of influence? How can we build and make new disciples? Mm -hmm. And we want to help you at Watermark as a leader because uh, as a leader, you want to lead in that. Uh, groups have a tendency to grow inward, right. which is a great strength. We all want that fellowship, community, accountability, but we have to lead an outward focus. Mm -hmm. And so as a leader, I want to give you a couple of practices that will help you keep that missional edge within your group. Good. One of them is prayer. Not just praying for our own prayer request, which is a great thing. How are we praying for lost people, unsaved people, undiscipled people in our lives? Does everybody have a person they can share about and experience how they're asking for prayer for those people that need to hear Jesus and follow him? And how can they be a part of that? Prayer is a big thing. The second thing is grace testimony. Everybody in your group has a grace testimony. And to share those grace testimonies regularly, mm -hmm. to actually equip them in that, what it looks like to have a grace testimony, share that grace testimony, that keeps your group focused on, hey, wow, God's given me a testimony. I'm supposed to share that with the people that don't know Jesus in my life. Yeah. That's a great practice you can use. Also, service. Mm. You know, do a service project within the community. T help them get out of the box, right? Go to the homeless and do a homeless feeding. Get your team to go to Mexico and build a house. Find a hurting peer person in a neighborhood yeah. that you can go take groceries to or do something for Christmas or a special occasion for. Get your group focused on meeting the hurting needs of the community around us. Those are three great focus things that you can do to keep your group focused on mission, and it's our job to multiply and go and make disciples. That's awesome. That's super practical and very specific. Remember, the point and purpose of groups is transformation, to grow yes. deeper in our intimacy with one another and our God. These things, when you go inside, as Bucky said, it can be a strength, it can be a wonder, it can lead to intimacy, but done too long with an inner focus, an insider focus, can lead to a stale and a plateau faith. 
Now, uh, that's what I love about that example, Bucky, about serving. When you go out, you're going to find that your faith is soaring and that people are transformed yes. uh, just by going outside of their comfort zone and, and serving others. So the group maintains a transformative aspect. Yes, yeah, so much happens when you take people on an adventure where they have to step out of their comfort zone and trust God by faith, whether that's praying for the lost, going to serve people that they're not familiar with, sharing their grace testimony. There's so much growth that happens there. And because you're with them in the group, you're going to help them process that growth and make, make that growth more powerful for everybody. It's a, it's a transforming thing in a group to go on mission. Yeah, you know, the practical thing you just may think of, Bucky, is that consider where your group meets. You know, groups are not only official if they meet at the church building. They meet in homes. That's actually a wonderful kingdom benefit because the church has moved into the neighborhood, actually, in a wonderful way. So who's in your midst? Wherever you gather for your group, maybe you meet at a coffee shop. And at the time of filming, of course, we're in a COVID kind of era, but afterwards, is there a, a store, a coffee shop, a restaurant, another location, or your neighborhood where you meet? The kingdom is advancing wherever you are. So don't forget that. Don't underrate that. There's great potential all around you as your group gathers others in particular areas. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. And you can open up your home to those people that are not in your group and have a special outreach night where you have a dinner and conversation right. and just build relationships with people in the community. Right. And uh, that's a great opportunity as well. Yep. So don't forget, you guys, the, the mandate here is to look outward, to maintain a missional focus, to, to consider pushing the kingdom out. And remember, there's wonderful biblical tradition that undergirds everything we've said today. Yeah. If you look at Jesus, his work and ministry, his most popular topic was the kingdom. And the kingdom advanced wherever the believers were, wherever the disciples and apostles were, their ministry went forward. Go into the Old Testament, that we had a God who was very interested in welcoming foreigners and strangers in the midst of the, of the Jews, of the Israelites. So. Don't forget that focus. It'll lead to more transformation for you and the people in your group. It's awesome. It's quite an adventure. God be with you as you keep that mission focus within your group. Thanks, you guys.